Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Talented Television. Hey, I love when you all come and visit with me. So first, you know, people are always reminding me to press, to remind you to press that subscribe button. So that's where I want to start today. Press the subscribe button. You don't want to miss another episode of Talented Television because I am bringing you some powerful people who have some great information and they are super talented. So with that being said, I have someone special for you today. But this guy here, he really has a special place in my heart. So ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, welcome Mr. Fred Willis. Hey Fred. Hey, how you doing? I'm wonderful today. How you doing over there in Texas? <laughs> oh, we doing a lot better Saturday. Uh, tomorrow is looking better than last Sunday did last Saturday. So we are doing really good. We're thawing out. Life is good. God is good. And uh, you listen, I'm just glad that uh, we finally got this together, you know? Yes, I feel the same <laughs> way. I feel the same way. It's been a long time coming. But long you know time what? coming. <laughs> but it's on time, right? That's right. That's right. Even after a storm, look at God working. Look at God after the storm. So this is going to be yep. good. After the storm, I, look, I mean, we're going to be able I to mean. segue very well, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. So I love your sweatshirt. It says Godfidence, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Godfidence. This is a sweater that I wear. I got it from a real good friend of mine in Chicago. And um, after I got it, I wore it to an industry event, everybody was like, where do you get that? How do I get it? And I reached out and I said, listen, I got a ton of people that want it. And she said, I had to discontinue the line because somebody else already has it and doing all that kind of stuff. So I just wear it from oh, time wow. to time because I love it. And uh, obviously I love the message. The confidence is not in me, it's in God. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, wow. I just hate that I had to discard it like that though, yeah. Yeah, that's a dope sweatshirt. Look, I hate that she mm -hmm. had to end it too, because I like yeah. it. I like yeah. it a lot. So yeah. Fred, let's go back a little bit. For those okay. who may not know who you are, you know, you are also a host extraordinaire. You uh, <laughs> taught me some things, you know, but I kind of mm -hmm. want to talk about how we met and then we'll talk about who Fred Willis is because you have many hats that you wear, okay? Yeah. So, yeah. um. For those of you, uh, my first encounter with Fred was a few years back, right? About how yep. many years now? Maybe three or four? I want to say maybe... Four or five, you know, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a minute. Or maybe even six. That's been a because while. Because it was even... Either, yeah, it was either 2015. I remember that year because the person <laughs> you <laughs> asked me about, they weren't in Vegas after that. So that may wow. have been 2015 or 2016. Yes, that's, that's oh, wild. Oh, my goodness. So it's been yeah. a minute. It has. Yeah. And yeah. Um, our meeting was a chance encounter. It was actually a funny story. Um, without <laughs> saying any names, I couldn't say any names anyway, right. you know, because right. I don't remember. Um, but you know, I was a new artist <laughs> at the time who had just gotten music out and, mm -hmm. um, you know, there were people, there was a certain person who was meeting with a new artist that day. Um, yeah. but for some reason I was the least of those, you know, so I was ignored, but mm -hmm. Fred, your heart was so big. I remember you kind of seeing me standing there and you like, you want to see would you like to sit down? You know, that type of thing. And I'm looking at you like, no, thank you. Never mind. You know, feelings kind of hurt, feeling crushed as a new artist. But, um, you know, our spirits seem to have kind of connected because you acknowledged mm -hmm. me, you know, which is yeah. huge, you know. Um, so by chance encounter, but not by chance, you know, because it was definitely God. I remember a friend had invited me to a event the following day. So this was yeah. during uh, Stellar Awards uh, mm -hmm. one year. So a friend yeah. invited me to one of the events the following day. I was actually at work, took my lunch break and came <laughs> out. So yeah. as I was leaving to go back to work, 
who did I run into? None other than Fred. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was so grateful to see you that day. And we remembered each other from the night before. And we kind of connected. And you took my music and you were like, you know what? I'll play your song. And so that meant so much to me because you didn't know me from, I'll say Eve, you know, folks be like, you don't know me from Adam. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know me from Eve, you know, right. but you right. still, I, I saw God in you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I saw the heart in you. And so that meant a lot. Um, so I want to thank you publicly for that. And you are now stuck with me. You're my first. <laughs> <laughs> and likewise, likewise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So Fred, tell the people um, some of the things that you have done. So I know that you are a host. You've done the Stellar Awards. You've done different, you know, entertainment events. I know that uh, we spoke recently about you doing a Super Bowl event, even one year, mm -hmm. a gospel mm -hmm, Super Bowl mm -hmm. e event. Yeah. Um, you also minister, you are an mm -hmm. excellent minister, you are a musician, and newly an author. So yeah. let's talk about some of the things that you have done in the past so people will know who Fred Willis is. I don't just bring ordinary people on this show. I bring <laughs> extraordinary people with God. I love it. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, let's see. To answer your question, I do a number of things, and sometimes I forget what I do. Um, sometimes I forget what I have done before. Yeah. Uh, but as a journalist, it all, I am a musician, and so I, that's my identity, a musician and an uh, audio engineer by trade. That's what I do. That's what I went to school for. I got papers. You know, you got to say all that kind of stuff. Come anyway, <laughs> my whole life was music and audio engineering, songwriting, producing, Okay, so in 2010, uh, as an audio engineer and a musician, life began to shift for me and I knew I needed to do something to better provide for my family. So I took this opportunity uh, provided by examiner.com to become a blogger. And from there, life as a freelance journalist just literally unfurled. I began to understand what God had planned for my life uh, in regard to writing and being a professional journalist. Uh, I am still a musician, still an audio engineer. Actually, those things factor into my uh, radio station and the production of jingles and show themes and things like that. Uh, I still write songs, still have songs that I'm uh, going to release. Um, but in this in this phase where I am now, I'm using my pen and uh, the world is my uh, auditorium. And uh, let's see, what, what do I say? My, the lectern is, the library is my lectern. That's how I say that. Uh, so many times as a preacher, uh, you don't really have opportunities unless you're a pastor, unless you're an evangelist and you travel, you're itinerant like that. Um, but I've learned over the years that the Lord has created opportunities uniquely for me. And so to better describe or best describe what I do, I'm just, you know, showing you how I use them as a journalist and an author. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So tell me, who was one of your favorite people to um, interview? I know you've interviewed <laughs> lots of people, but tell yeah. me one of your most favorite interviews and maybe one of your most interesting interviews. <laughs> mm, that's a good one. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say Bishop Jakes uh, because I was able to interview Bishop Jakes about Megafest. Nice. Both at at Megafest and the uh, one of the years leading up to Megafest. Uh, and so I'm in Fort Worth, he's in Dallas. And so there's this, there's always a schism about uh, the two different cities because there's two different cultures, right? Uh, you know, but I was able to represent the city. I said, you know, tell the people of Fort Worth, you know, give the people something, you know, to come to Dallas, make them want to come to Dallas. And so he, he spoke to that and he's, you know, it, it, it took our interview to another level. You know, he was like, I really want Fort Worth to come out, you know, which he wanted everybody to come. People come from everywhere. Uh, and so that was really good. He always takes time to ask questions and really get into what I'm asking to deliver great responses. And, you know, when I, I as I'm listening, I'm listening to his vocabulary. And he said a word uh, at the, the uh, screening of a movie Tony Braxton starred in. Mm -hmm. And I asked him something. I forgot what I asked him. He used the word substratum. And I was just nodding my head. And I was like, what in the world does that word mean? You know? Right. And so I'm having to, uh, in real time, like use context clues so that he doesn't lose me, you know, with just an answer that's flowing like water from him. 
Uh, so I, I enjoy his ministry. I enjoyed that season of uh, access to him that I did have. Um, and so he's one of my favorite. Babyface, though, is the other answer to that because Babyface oh, is my, my, the my. artist. Don't mm -hmm, tell mm -hmm. me you met the face, too. <laughs> I sure did. And he is uh, one I was of my favorites. <laughs> I was able to tell him that, you know, and, and I was able to tell him, you know, that Waiting to Exhale album is the album that made me want to become a better songwriter. Wow. It, it made me want to tap into songwriting in my own way. Uh, it made me want to further pursue audio production you know it made me want to further pursue the industry you know when i read that wait next hell album those liner notes and i saw his name on every song you know and i said you know this doesn't really happen the only other i mean it does happen obviously in other genres it happens a lot more um but i said only time i've ever seen that is ever seen that is maybe barry gordy with motown or quincy jones uh you know with with a the various artists he works with. And so my big three for production and uh, and that were Quincy Jones, Babyface, and Barry Gordy, which Barry Gordy was more an, an, an executive than anything else. But meet Babyface, that was a favorite. More, most interesting, um, oh, I've had some that have gone ugly. Yeah. You know what, I won't say that artist. I'll tell you off off uh off the off air the off the record yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there was an artist i had written an article about and i know people you know i'm thinking people don't really read my columns which i wanted them to read it because i was saying constructive things you know right and that artist came to town and i just got the vibe that maybe they read my article and knew who i was and uh -oh. so yeah, I still wanted the picture, you know, I mean, the singing is incredible, you know, one of my favorite singers, but, you know, they just do crazy stuff sometimes, and they got to be called out on it, um, and this is before Larry Reed and, and stuff like that, this is just saying, come on, man, you represent our industry, you know, right. Absolutely. Um, and so it just seemed like they knew the art, they knew I wrote the article, and so they were really standoffish, and they were cold, cool with everybody else and cold with me, and I was like, ugh. They but did. it didn't change but yeah that was interesting that was interesting because they didn't show me any love i got the picture but it was like Ugh. right you know mm -hmm. wow well, yeah well fred you know what i want to talk about what you've been doing lately okay which is writing like you said mm -hmm. you've been picking up that pen you know yeah and yeah one of the first uh books that you produced was the journey to genesis correct yeah 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 yes so i want to show that book actually this is fred's book the journey <laughs> to oh, let me bring it back a little bit you know these green yeah yeah <laughs> and your book green so it ain't gonna yep. show you. but the journey yep. to genesis this is his book by fred willis so um that book you are really telling men how to get back to their original place or position mm -hmm. in god correct yeah yeah yes. so when did you get the inspiration to um write this book how did the inspiration come about you know i write a bunch of stuff that doesn't get published <laughs> uh, i write a lot of articles that never make it to a platform not even mine mm -hmm. i've written a lot of sermons that i have never preached and uh some of them are in that book Wow. Uh, some of those articles are in that book. Uh, but the thing that I discovered then is I was writing another book. And this was only a chapter in that book when I was saying I got back to my beginning because I understood purpose for my life. Right. And so uh, I was on my way to a, a women's conference. And this is the only one I've been to, only one I've been invited to speak at. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was going to be a part of a panel of male entrepreneurs. We were just talking about, you know, entrepreneurship, whatever. Right. And on the way, as I was planning, you know, I said, you know, I need product. <laughs> you know, I want to set up a table, sell some product. And, and I said, I don't have anything to sell. You know, I, at that time, and I'm just going to slip this into business owners, I hadn't identified my service. Yeah. So I'm a freelance journalist, but who's walking around needing an article? That number okay. is different versus people who may need a press release uh, versus people who may need uh, media pitches. You know, so I had yet to identify services 
uh, that were actionable for potential clients. And so I said, I'll just write a, you know, write an ebook about how I got started. You know, they're going to hear me talking about my business. Right. And so let me just talk about that. And I said, what should I name it? <laughs> and so uh, in the process of that, I began to think further. And I said, you know, we don't even have men's conferences like this on this level. Okay. Women are always bettering themselves. Women are always, you know, conferencing and whatever, seeking what they could do. Even retreats, you know, women yeah. will do a retreat in a heartbeat. Men are like, who who all coming? You know, who's hosting <laughs> who it? <coming? laughs> you know, um, and, and really men are like that because men are like, I want to know who's coming, who's going to be there because I may know more than them and it might be a waste of my time, you know. Yeah. Um, factor in also, uh, men probably don't get time off like that because men are in leadership positions still. You know, you have companies that have not shifted. Uh, to the female future or female present, you know, and so a lot of men can't even get off, you know, get off of work for things like that. Um, yeah. And so I began writing the book and I, I said, you know, as I'm writing this and I'm understanding purpose, I said, you know, even Adam had purpose. And so it just grew from that. It's a, it's a big book. <laughs> it's not a pamphlet. No, it's um, not. It's a book. This, yes. It's intensive reading. It's didactic. And I tell people, you know, you buy it today, you may not finish it to this month. You may not finish it this year. That's fine. Uh, just finish it, though. You know, that's in fact, that's what the book is about. Finishing, understanding your purpose and then working to complete it. Not every year has been a year of purpose. Many of them have been. And so I want to, number one, awaken the conversation. Uh, number two, identify what the journey looks like. And then number three, I want to encourage people uh, to, like I said, pursue uh, to the finish line of purpose. In fact, my last chapter is, um, second to last chapter, I think, is uh, talking about the finish line. The last one is you don't have to be mainstream to be major. Uh, talk, that's just more encouragement. You know, many times we won't do a thing because we are little. We're little in our own eyes. We're little in our own mind, you know, but what God has called you to he intends for you to to complete so uh, yeah. that's what that book is about we start in genesis and uh you know we don't end in revelation per se but i do end the book by saying as jesus says in revelation 2 i know your works and so yeah. when you face him when we face him that's what he's gonna say to us you know what what did you do with what i gave you yeah you dropped some nuggets you definitely did um, even for me, I grabbed a nugget right away because as you know, you know, I, I'm an artist, you know, I haven't mm -hmm. dropped any new music lately, but it's coming. It's in the yeah. works. I'm actually in the studio. But in the meantime, in between time, I have talented television, you know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. when I am invited to events and things like that, what is my product? What can yeah. I offer? Mm -hmm. um someone so i hope you know like um like i said that people have grabbed the nuggets that you've given out because another thing you said is finish what you start i have some yes, that i Lord. have in the works as well and a lot of times you're a creative as well and i was sharing with one of my friends yesterday that just being a creative our minds are always going you know <laughs> all um, the time i wrote a book which i did i wrote a children's book you know yeah, I yeah. designed t-shirts i got yeah. talent to television i'm a songwriter yeah. you know what i'm saying i love to act and so with all of those things you gotta finish something you gotta finish yes. what you started you know yeah. god has yeah. given us a lot you know how in the bible it talks about each person receiving that talent and yeah. so, you know one went and put his stuff in the ground and he was like yep. well you were coming back you know yeah no, use the talent that god gave you and complete that mission right yes yes yeah okay. i i, I share that in the book too um because he says the one with one talent says well i knew you were a hard man and and you yeah. you reaped where you did so it wasn't for him to judge that man the, you sure know this was. is your boss first of all and he gave you that you know, to do better with. And then the Bible tells us that he lost what he had. The little bit he had, he lost. The little he was bit given he had. to the one. Yeah, so, because he didn't. Uh, and I don't minimize anything. I tell people, you know, to your point about you do a lot of things you or you do more than one thing. Nothing wrong right. with that. But I learned this. This is when I began to move forward as a writer and a journalist was God wants to use the totality of your life's experiences for his glory. Yeah exactly he wants to use everything it all fits it all works together it all has a place um you know because you 
you'll be surprised how many uh, singers, when they do interviews, they need media coaching. Well, media coaching comes directly out of acting, comes out of theater. Yes. You know, you learn how to how to become another person when the lights turn on. You know, you may not have had good sleep. You may have been on a plane that just landed an hour before your interview. Well, yes. you don't get on TV and you you have sleep. Uh -uh. You know, you know, I'm but you learn. You. Look, you, yeah, <laughs> you know, you come on, you like hello. Hey, <laughs> you're a whole different person. You know how for the for the duration of you know the lights being on when they turn yep. off when. When that director, that, that stage, uh, whatever person says we're done. That floor director can, say cut. Yeah, you know. And and so knowing that even puts you in a different, um, in a different, puts you in a different echelon than some of your, your colleagues who are also independent artists. So yeah, it all works together. It all works together. Thank you. That's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Look, that's a blessing in itself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Genesis, in you talking about it, I just want to say that a lot of the things, even though your book is geared towards men, which is definitely mm -hmm. needed, um, yeah. women can certainly glean um, from what you've given, those nuggets and those pieces that you've given in there. We can certainly take, you know, something and, and apply it to our lives as well. So let me ask a question, Fred. Why do you feel men have lost their way in the world as the head of the family and things like that. What do you think brought that about? Oh, that's a good question. Um, and it's got many answers. One, one such answer is, um, you know, and the Bible calls it the cares of life. Yeah. Um, you know, it, we, we, in the fifties and, and 40s, 50s and 60s, even during the world war, you know, when, um, was that Rosie says, you know, she can do it. Yeah. Um, women entering the workforce, men were the head. They were the head and women were literally subjugated to home life and home living. And so uh, when things changed, uh, men were, there's this carrot that's dangled out in front of men now called the American dream. Yeah. And so people are pursuing the American dream and not necessarily their lives purpose. You know, the reason you were created you know, and so the focus is off. This is, this is the way I see it. The focus is off and men, <clears throat> excuse me, the men as God has designed it are not pursuing purpose because again, they're pursuing this dream, this American dream. I got to have the big house. I got to have the big car. Uh, and even the dream of saying, hey, I want to work 30 years, retire, get to go watch and prop, prop my feet up until I die. Yeah. And that's it. You know, and so we many men have never heard a message that says you were created for more. Some men are stuck in believing God, God don't want to use me for that, you know. Um, and so we put all I put as many messages as I could into this book. Uh, we haven't seen it modeled out before us. You know, uh, we started and we failed. We started and, and you know, it's just too much. You know, sometimes men need to have a safe space to say, yo man this is too much right i see why i see why my daddy left yeah. you know we just need a safe space to at least say it um and then pick ourselves up and say but you can you know you ain't him <laughs> you are not him you you can do better than that you can go further in life uh than he did we even have the this this um we're misguided by the pursuit of education higher education i need this degree i need that degree um and life is as such i mean you you have it i have it um, things that we may not have even went to college for that we're able to do that we're able to be competitive in, um, you know, and so people don't have have that message and may really not even have somebody to tell them. So I put it in the book. <laughs> you know, I said I wanted to be the man who wrote the songs that made the whole world sing. Um, but watch God use me as the man with the mic interviewing and writing about the people who wrote the songs to make the whole world sing. Come here, Edwin Hawkins, Kirk Franklin. You know, I got a long list of people, but I'm using yes. those people because those are the ones that I modeled my life after. You know, I literally played in the same church as Kirk Franklin played at. Wow, wow. You know, maybe 10, 15, 20 years apart. You know, right. it's like Kirk Franklin played here. Kirk played here. You know, we just call him Kirk. Kirk yeah. played here. You know, Kirk was Kirk was here. That's the message. You know, you come in, you sit on the organ, Kirk yep. was here. Ain't that you know, something? and so God, it yeah, it is. <laughs> it really is. So you um, rubbed shoulders you know, with and, a lot of you know great people 
Um, and yeah. I mean, but you're great. You know what I'm saying? Because up, yeah. everyone yeah. doesn't get that opportunity. And, um, you know, a lot of times because our names haven't made it in light, we may mm -hmm. feel, you know, oh, you know, I'm not on the same level or whatever the case may be, but mm -hmm. each one reach one. And God has given each one of us something special. And so, yeah. you know, there are people that Kirk Franklin may never reach, but Fred Willis is reaching, you know, or yeah. Michelle is reaching. And so right. I'm grateful for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just the yeah. way that God operates. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Wow. And, and we have to adjust to put our eyes on what he wants us to look at. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's something that we we kind of minimize it. And I've been guilty of that, too. When somebody say, yeah, you reach the people Bishop Jakes will never reach. And I'm like, no, but I want to reach the people Bishop Jakes is reaching. <laughs> you know, right. uh, let's be honest. You know, you look at views on your channel. You look at engagement on social media and you look at something they're doing that may not even have the heft of what you're saying, you know, yeah. and let's be honest, it is, it, that's just not the post for that day. And then they come back the next day and they just wall up everything you've been posting all week. Um, this is why I don't compete. You know, I can't, yeah. I can't compete. You know, I'm just, I'm just in the category. I, we're not competing. Yeah. I'm just, you what know. Did, uh, Jonathan say comparison kills, right? It kills. It kills. Yeah. And, and President Roosevelt said comparison is the thief of joy. You know, you don't even take joy in what you're able to do. Um, but what I put in the book is I talked about being offended by purpose. That's wow. a chapter um, talking about Jonah. Jonah was killing the game as a preacher until God says, all right, now go preach to Nineveh. And he said, mm -hmm. yeah. I, ain't <laughs> no, no, no. I ain't going there. Yeah. And, and so many times we're offended by the very thing God is, is using to elevate us. And so that's why you can't move off of your place. You can't move out of purpose because of what somebody else is doing or because it's not what you want to do. Absolutely. You know, and even in chapter four of Jonah, at the end of his story, he he's sitting there under a tree, mad at God. God asked him, doest thou well to be angry? Hmm. They didn't, he didn't preach the revival. He didn't, after being in the, the big fish, he didn't preach. They repented and he's still mad. And he's still mad. He like, for real, for real, God. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's how a lot of us are. You know, that I wanted to be a Grammy winner. I didn't want to be an Indy Award winner. Don't nobody know this radio station giving me this award. <laughs> funny. He like, but this real talk. This yeah, is real talk. Absolutely. This is our reality. And we got to get free from, from this mindset because it's killing us. It's delaying us reaching our purpose. And it's really holding us in sin if we yeah. look at it deep enough. You know, so that's, that's, that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. That's good. That's good stuff because I have a friend that's um, in the industry, you know, he's mm -hmm. on television now and things like that. And so we were having a discussion one day and he was talking to me because I was like, you know, thinking about my show, I'm in my third year now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes let's just be real, Fred, we are trying to reach, you know, the multitude. And like you mm -hmm. said, we look at our views and we're like, now, wait a minute. <laughs> there is hard work and effort yes. that goes into this. Yeah. There are late nights. There is frustration. All the yes. things that we're doing, you know, now that they've made it, you know, our friends and things like that, that they've made it, they mm -hmm. kind of have a team to support them. Damn. Whereas we are still independent artists. So mm -hmm. we are, you know, editing these things and doing all of this, these things. But one thing that he shared with me was Kim. He said, this didn't happen overnight for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was 17, 18 years where I was grinding. Nobody came. I had Lord to put my own money into stuff. You know what I'm saying? Before yeah. someone finally said, oh, you know what? He's good. He said, so right where you are, you don't have to ask your viewers, you know, um, how should I change this or how should I change that? He said, because those that are meant for you will come. They yeah. will come. He said, and it only takes one. It mm -hmm. only takes one person to see what you're doing and to help you get to the next level because they believe. So I'm important. I'm thankful for little nuggets like that as well. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they keep us going. And the lesson I learned is consistency. Um, many times in the Bible, Jesus sent the disciples, you know, and he'll say, go here and ask this person this. Go here to do this. 
Right. Uh, and many times the lesson is that somebody was where Jesus said they were going to be. And so when we do what we do, when people come looking for what we do and deliver, we have to be consistent enough that we are there when they come looking for it. Um, and, and, and I mean, that's, that's, that's the point. Just be consistent, you know, because you can't, you can't look up and say, well, ain't nobody here. Well, sir, you haven't worked hard enough to draw the audience that's going to come looking for you yet. You know, you have to do that. Um, you can't look up. Jesus talks about picking your hand up from the plow. You know, you, you, you haven't done the work yet. And sometimes that's the other part. We have to just acknowledge that we are not there on the journey yet. Uh, and I'll be, I'll be the first to admit I quit. I do. People yeah. don't know, but the thing, the reason they don't know is because the audience ain't there to know. Right. <laughs> you know, it, get, it gets yeah. hard sometimes. You know, I'm trying to yeah. get myself back in order, especially after you know this coronavirus and things oh, like yeah. that. It's yeah. totally oh, man. shifted. Yeah. Um, you know, the way that I do talented television and things like that, because we talked about interviewing a while ago, but yeah, we oh, yeah, in person, you know, mm -hmm. but. Yep. We got to switch things up sometimes and make it happen. With that being said, we have a few minutes left. So I want to okay. also talk about peace be still. This crisis <laughs> is not cause for alarm. This yeah. is your other book um, mm -hmm. that you have written that really blessed my life in the middle of this coronavirus season. Um, let's talk about this book a little bit. Um, just to let people know how you pulled from the word of God and, and that story in the Bible where the sea was rocking and rolling, because that's how we felt when coronavirus hit. We didn't yeah. know, like, Jesus, are you here? You with us? You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to make it. We were seeing <laughs> death. We were seeing, you know, yeah. tears. We were seeing people losing their jobs. But you said in this book, this crisis is not cause oh, for alarm okay mm -hmm. let's talk about that a little bit fred well listen uh as i said earlier about the journey to genesis i reverted back or oh, i just went i revisited that's the word this crisis is not cause for alarm was one of the early teachings when uh soul prosper radio was a podcast and i taught from that that passage of scripture but i i had to look to apply uh, applied to the coronavirus season. And, and so I said, you know, Lord, is this what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, and so I, I dove into it, you know, and I said, now I'm trusting you with this because obviously, you know, you had people who were calling it a hoax and things like that. So the first thing was that, yes, we were in a storm. Yes, we were unprepared for it. Um, but he, he took me through the end of the chapter to what happened when that once they finally survived the storm and reached the coast. And I said, you know what, this is a word of encouragement for the people of God. Uh, that we have to know we got to reach the other side and there are many who did not reach the other side um, and so we remember them but we hold on to the faithfulness of God as we are still here he kept us brought me through yeah. me and my wife through the coronavirus um man um and so and who would have ever a, thought you wrote this book you know this this is not uh this crisis is not cause for alarm and then you had to face that exact storm. You and your wife, <laughs> like you said, had the coronavirus, you know? Yeah, man. This I, I had to pick this book up and, and read it again. Thank you, Lord. Um, and I had to say, now, God, this is where we are. Uh, I got to get to the other side, not only of this diagnosis, but of this storm altogether. Uh, and so I had to hold on to my faith. I, I taught a Sunday school lesson sweating profusely. And thought it was just a fever and i felt so bad that day uh and later discovered that it was the onset of the coronavirus and so uh that lesson by the way was what happens when things go wrong wow you know uh and so i said well god if you're just gonna use me to walk this thing out let's walk you know um and so we uh, walk it out you know people want to see a sermon <laughs> you know and so in that, I, I, I was, we came through it and every day was a, a, a faith challenge. You know, there were, um, you know, pains and aches and things like that. I didn't feel good, but I had to hold on to what I had already written. Yeah. And I thank God for speaking to me uh, to write this book. And, and it's still relevant. I know we're in a new year and people think the coronavirus is going away. It ain't going away. We still yeah. in it. Thank yeah. God we have a new president uh, and a new administration who is working to get us through it. Amen. 
Um, but much of what I share in that is for believers, how to approach this pandemic, you know, how to find God in it, how to let him find you in it, uh, and how to let him direct your steps and guide your steps. The last chapter, the epilogue says, I ain't crazy, but my faith is. And so there are many things that uh, during this pandemic that has caused us to maybe uh, lose sight of, of the promises of God, lose sight of the, the assignment that we have going back to the journey, journey to Genesis. Right. But this book is here to remind us that God yet has a plan and he's going to bring us through this. They looked at Jesus crazy and said, carest thou not that we perish? And I'm huh. sure you've been at that point during this pandemic, but I'm here to tell you as a survivor uh, that this crisis, even this crisis is not cause for alarm. That's good stuff, Fred. Good mm -hmm. stuff. We have a mm -hmm. few minutes left. I want to do two things. I want you to All tell right. everyone how they can find you. And then also just something quick that you can teach me that I can take with me. We have about mm. three minutes left. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, you can find me on Instagram at who is Fred Willis dot, uh, and who is Fred Willis. And you can go to who is Fred Willis dot com and discover all things about me. Uh, Soul Prosper Media is where you can find my my uh, SMG report that I'm working on today and trying to deliver a new one. SP Radio Show is where you can hear my station that broadcasts gospel music, great gospel and inspirational music 24 hours a day. Uh, but who is Fred Willis dot com will send you to all those places. You can find more about me. If I were to teach you anything, Kimberly Eshell, I would teach you, uh, let's see, Fatality Television. I'm going to teach you how to write a book. And so okay. really quickly, I'm going to say this. You need a pen, you need a paper, but you also need voice notes on your phone. And you need to write down everything that you hear. Everything, uh, edit it later, but write down everything you hear. This is my process for writing a book. I use my voice notes. And many times I talk to myself as it comes to me and so you have it on your phone write those voice notes down uh, and as you collect them you'll see that book just kind of grow and flesh out and as you begin the process of fleshing those things out you'll discover your voice and uh, i'm ready to hear that children's book that you have i'm ready to read it anyway and get it in my hands and so you have other books that i'm sure that you're working on writing or you have at least stirred in your spirit about writing them this is the first pro the first step in writing that book is writing it down. Write the vision. The, so the Bible says so that the ones who see it can run. And as an author, you need to see those words. You need to hear them. You need to have them secured so that you see them and run to the finish line of writing your book. Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much. This has been great. Fred Willis, thank you for being <laughs> with me today. The author. Yeah. Vision, the radio host he has so many titles like i said but one of my favorite titles is my friend he's also oh my yeah husband. so that's a beautiful thing as well but he's also my friend and i'm so grateful yes. to have met you so thank you all for watching talented television if you are interested in being on talented television email me Television at gmail.com. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye. Where would I Say my friend. Bye, y'all. <laughs>